In this video, I'm going to look at practical activity group one, moles determination. So this practical activity group covers measurement of mass and measurement of volume of gas. So what we'll do is I'm going to pose a couple of questions which you can have a go at answering. The first type of question will be a sort of planning kind of um, question where you've got to come up with um, a plan for an experiment and suggest the typical calculation that you would need to perform and then I'm going to actually throw some numbers at you and you can have a go at performing the calculation itself. So we'll start with measurement of mass. So a typical question could be something like this. Student wanted to determine the formula of hydrated magnesium sulfate, MgSO4.xH2O. Plan how the student could establish the formula of the salt to show the water of crystallization. In your answer, include detail of practical procedure that would need to be carried out, any measurements that would need to be taken, and then steps for the calculation. So if you want to pause the video, have a go, and then play on and we'll go through the answers. So here's my possible method. Now yours might be slightly different, but hopefully it's similar to this. So I've said you would use a two decimal place balance to record the mass of an empty crucible. Obviously, if your school or college has got a 3DP balance, all the better. We've got a 2DP one, so that's why I've put that there. Add a small amount of hydrated magnesium sulfate to the crucible. Reweigh and record the mass. Gently heat the crucible for two, you could have said two or three minutes. Allow it to cool and reweigh. And you would continue to do that until constant mass was achieved. And the point of that is to make sure that all of the water of crystallization has been removed. So that's kind of what it would look like. So you can see the crucible at the top there. You've got your hydrated magnesium sulfate in the crucible. You could support that. We use a pipe clay triangle. You could just put that straight on a gauze if you wanted to. Obviously, we've got a tripod and Bunsen as well. So, kind of calculation now. You would use the mass of the crucible and the hydrated salt and the mass of the empty crucible to work out the mass of hydrated magnesium sulfate used. So, obviously, that would be done via a subtraction. At the very end of the experiment, you'd use the mass of the crucible and anhydrous salt and the mass of the empty crucible to work out the final mass of anhydrous magnesium sulfate. So you would calculate the mass of water removed by calculate the difference in the masses. You would then work out the moles of anhydrous salt by dividing the mass of anhydrous salt by the molar mass of MgSO4, which is 120.4. Moles of water by dividing the mass of water removed by the molar mass of water, which is 18. And then you'd work out the ratio between the two by dividing the moles of water by the moles of anhydrous salt. So here's an example for you to try. You've got these three values, mass of empty crucible, 3.89 grams, crucible and hydrated magnesium sulfate was 7.10, and the crucible and anhydrous at the end was 5.46 grams. And obviously from those results, you need to calculate a value for the hydrated salt. If you want to have a go at that, pause the video, and then we'll look at the answer. So the moles of magnesium sulfate is obviously the 5.46, the anhydrous value, minus that empty crucible over the MR of MgSO4. 
So that came out at 0 0.0130 moles. The moles of water, you could just work the difference out between these two numbers, because that takes into account the crucible as well, and we get 0 0.0911. The ratio magnesium sulfate to water is 1 to 7, and so there's the formula. So if we have a look at measurement of volume of gas now, so similar kind of question to start with. The student was asked to plan and carry out the practical to determine the MR of magnesium by reactant with dilute hydrochloric acid at RTP, so that's room temperature and pressure. There's the reaction equation, which obviously is going to be helpful for the calculation. So plan how the student could establish the MR of magnesium. In the answer, include detail of the practical procedure that would need to be carried out, any measurements that would need to be taken, and steps for the calculation. So again, pause the video, have a go, and then play on and we'll go through the answers. So here's my possible method. Again, using that 2 dp balance, record the mass of a strip of magnesium ribbon. Place that in a conical flask. Use a measuring cylinder, measure an excess amount of dilute hydrochloric acid. We want all of that magnesium ribbon to react, so that's why we need to use an excess of acid. Carefully add the acid to the flask, quickly fitting a bung connected to a gas syringe, and that's going to record the mass of gas produced. When the syringe has stopped moving, record the final volume of gas produced. So that's what your experiment would look like. Here's the steps required in the calculation. So there's the equation for the reaction. So the first thing you do is calculate the moles of hydrogen produced by dividing the volume of hydrogen by 24,000. The moles of magnesium would be the same as the moles of hydrogen because of the one-to-one -one ratio between these two substances in the equation. And then the MR of magnesium would be calculated by dividing the mass. Remember you measured the mass of magnesium at the start by the moles, and that would give you the MR. And finally, here's an example. The student found that 0.11 grams of magnesium ribbon produced 109 cm cubed of hydrogen gas at RTP when reacted with an excess amount of 1 mole per decimeter cubed HCl. Use these results to calculate a value for the MR of magnesium and give your answer to one decimal place. So the moles of hydrogen is that 109 divided by 24,000. Moles of magnesium is the same. MR would be the mass divided by those moles and these results give you an MR of 24. 0.2 grams per mole. Remember on the data sheet the MR of magnesium is 24.3. Obviously these are based on experimental results and so you're not going to get necessarily the same value as the data sheet.